Hello everyone, Pay Nomination here, and in today's video, I am going to do what has never been done before by anybody. I am going to attempt to survive 100 days of hardcore Minecraft in a super flat world. Yes, you heard me right. That very super flat world that is infested with slimes big and small that can take a guy like me down in only a couple of thrusts. Wait, that, that did not sound right. Anyways, for these 100 days, I am going to struggle to get by on limited resources, including the only type of tree that is naturally available, oak wood. Ew. Since there are no ores in Super Flat World, the only iron I can get is from iron golems and blacksmith chests, and any hopes of getting diamonds are all up to this Squidward squad over here. Will I survive the full 100 days, or will I be beaten down by this field of big chungai? Watch until the end to find out. Also, if you're new here and you do go on to enjoy the video, then it would mean a lot to me if you subscribed. We are super close to 200,000 subs and we still have so far to go if we're going to hit that crazy goal of hitting 1 million subs by the end of 2021. Also, if we can get this video to 30,000 likes, then I will be pretty happy. I mean, th 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 that's it. Th that's all I got. Take it or leave it. Anyways, let's get straight into day one. I started out day one by slowly walking to the first village I saw so I could conserve as much energy as possible. I did what any true gamer would do and and I beat some wood with my bare hands. You know, something about that really doesn't sound right. It's, it's okay, it's fine. Anyways, I got enough wood to make a wooden pickaxe and a wooden axe, and I totally didn't make a whole bunch of slabs by accident. Not your boy. After getting tools, I let my true speedrunner instinct kick in, and I towered up and killed the local iron golem, and this man dropped me five ingots. After this, I went on a stealing rampage. I stole every bed in the village, and I had my first and probably not last near-death experience with this large sticky boy. You know what? That's totally what I'm going to call them from now on. Can I get some large sticky boys in the comments? I I'm totally going to regret saying that. While looting the village, I didn't find a blacksmith, but I did find the next best thing, a chest with some free food and some leather drip. Oh, and I also got some cash money. After finishing off the first village, I ran over to the next in search of a hopefully bomb AF blacksmith, and you guessed it, there was none. So instead, I also decapitated the local village defender for some more juicy iron. At this point, the sun was going down and the slimes were still so thirsty for my booty, so I stole some help as villager's bed and I went to sleep. On day two, it was on to bigger and better villages. The first village I ran into had a chest with a leather helmet and a tunic, which will pretty much do nothing against the large sticky boys, but I did also find a saddle, which will be amazing if I could find a horse. After this, I noticed this iron golem that was working super hard defending the village from the slime nation, so I repaid him by butchering him for some more free iron. And I'm just gonna warn you now, there will be countless more iron golems who fall because of my needs for iron. Anyways, I was now a man that had nine iron. And then in the distance, I saw it. This absolute beast of a horse. He became friends with me in no time. And honestly, this was a pretty good horse. He was fast and he had a decent amount of health. Also, because he was a black horse, I gave him the name of a horse that passed away long ago. I named him Shadowmere. I spent most of this day moving from village to village with Shadowmere. And I didn't find a single blacksmith, but I did find a lot more food and I stole a brewing stand from this unsuspecting cleric. And I may or may not have also slain another iron golem. The world will never know. Once the sun began to set, I brought Shadowmere into a random house and we both got some rest for the night so I didn't have to deal with any more large sticky boys or explodey boys. On day three, I began stealing fences and torches from the villages so when I did find a place that I wanted to call home, I would be much more prepared. I continued looking through villages and I found the last piece of leather armor that I needed so I could be slightly less defenseless. Yay! I... I guess. Also, don't forget the iron golems. I killed one with no problems whatsoever, but when it came to the second one, I broke both of my axes, so I had to finish him off with my hands. Please don't take that out of context. After that struggle was over, I crafted myself a new iron axe, and later that night, I stole another house and went night-night with my brand new horse friend. On day four, I finally found my first blacksmith after only, like, 10 villages. Upon arriving, I ran up to the man. He was selling cheap iron axes, so I decided to buy a backup. After that, I looted the chest, and there was an iron helmet in there. I made myself an iron chest piece and a pair of leggings, and I tried to steal the furnaces, except these slimes were defending them with their lives. While I was here, I took advantage of this iron golem that was helping me out by running around and collecting all of the slime from the sticky boys that he helped me kill, and I crafted them into 
two slime blocks that I could maybe use for something in the future. Probably not though. Now that the slime were gone and I had my slime blocks, I repaid him for his help by taking his iron and turning him into the last piece of armor that I needed for a spicy full set of iron. After this, I traveled to the next village I saw in the distance because there was another blacksmith. And this one had 12 obsidian in the chest, which is so perfect that people will probably say I staged it, but you know what? I don't care. Also inside of that chest, there was a gold ingot, an iron pickaxe, and a backup iron chest piece. I went to celebrate my victory by killing this iron golem for some more sweet iron. And guess what? This large slime wombo comboed me and got me down to two hearts. I ran for my life back to Shadowmere so I could get the hell out of there. And after healing, I played a classic gladiator game of Joust. While the iron golem was distracted, I kept running past him and smacking his cheeks until he finally went down and I stole all of his iron. On day five, I found a new blacksmith and this one had another iron pickaxe and a spare chest plate and pair of leggings. I spent the whole day looking for other villages with a blacksmith until I found this one. I got some backup leggings from the chest, but I was more concerned with the sound of a zombie. I didn't see one anywhere and there were no caves. So I went to the next door house to find it. And do you know what happened? A bunch of slime pinned me against the front of the house and I died. Yep. That's right, five days in and the slimy chonky boys finally got me. But it's okay, I was not about to let the large sticky boys win. So I made another world and I played for the next five days to get somewhat back to where I was and I literally found a blacksmith on the first day that almost had full iron armor and a saddle and diamond horse armor. I really cannot make this stuff up. However, there was a spot in my heart that was always going to be empty. Shadow Mirror, you will be missed. You were such a beautiful and great horse. I will find your success Successor, and he shall be covered in drip. While exploring another blacksmith, I also realized where the zombie was. Apparently, there is a dark attic inside of each blacksmith, which is kind of unsettling, knowing that something this stupid is the reason why I died before and I no longer have Shadow Mirror. Anyways, while gearing up, I met a new horse, and this guy was brown, and he was a pretty cool dude. I gave him his diamond drip, and I named him Tim Burton, because I really have no clue why I do anything, to be honest. While journeying, I found another blacksmith, and this boy had three juicy diamonds and it was at that moment that I decided this was going to be my new home. On day six I spent most of the day fencing in a portion of the village so I could keep this infestation at bay. These slimes have absolutely zero chill and because I didn't have enough torches to make my base even remotely safe I just slept the night away. On day seven I made myself an iron hoe and I decided to turn this whole corner area into farmland because I'm pretty sure they're slime chunks that keep spawning the large sticky boys inside of my base. I I planted a ton of carrots and wheat seeds and I fenced it in so none of my farmer friends decided to doink my crops. While thinking about where I was going to put my animal pens, I noticed this giant slime just chilling with my sheep. And then somehow this man got into my farm and started destroying my carrots. So I deleted him from existence and this villager stole some of the carrots that he broke. I'm watching you. On day eight, I did my first of many beautiful acts of capitalism with my man here for an iron ax. After this, I began planting and harvesting trees because every four pieces of wood is equal to enough sticks for one emerald. Once I make my new Fletcher boys. And luckily enough, I thought ahead while out looting and I stole two Fletcher tables. Since, I mean, where else was I going to find Flint, you know? After this, I had a big, massive brain idea and I made a couple of shovels. The corner over here by my infinite water source keeps spawning slime, so I figured figured it's a slime chunk, so I turned the whole area into path blocks with the shovels so no more slime boys could spawn. Fun fact, path blocks count as transparent blocks, so slimes actually can't spawn on them. Also, regular mobs can't spawn on them either. Later that night, as I was going to go to sleep, I saw a group of slimes inside of my sheep pen, so I went to beat these men into the ground before I hit the hay for the day. On day 9, I made some more fences and I built a pen for the cows and for the sheep. After this, I lured the cows and the sheep over into the different pens and I made them both into families. Pain domination, farmer arc confirmed. Later that day, while trying to boat another villager into my base, it was becoming dark, and I noticed a freaking witch in my base. I panicked, and I placed a boat, hoping that she would be dumb enough to get stuck in it, and, well, I mean, suck it, witch. At this point, my base was becoming mad overrun with mobs, so I hid in my house and went night-night like the absolute man that I am. On day 10, I woke up to a ton of my trees being grown. While smacking down some nature, this big old slime came at me, and he was being held 
myself by that dumb witch in the boat. So I wiped the floor with the slimes and I ran in and bashed the witch in the head a couple of times. Looks like this is the last we'll be seeing of Boat Witch. After that was over, I reharvested all of my crops and I'm now almost done filling in the farmlands with carrots and wheat. Now that all of my farms are in full swing, I decided to let two of my villagers out so they could become Fletchers. To be more specific, they kind of let themselves out and they ran all around my base before I got them into boats. You know, the villagers kind of deserve their fates. Later that night, I struggled to get them into their new homes even after the sun went down. They're supposed to want to sleep in the beds, but they had absolutely zero interest in it. But after enough persistence, I did finally get them in and I went to sleep for the night. On day 11, I woke up and did some beautiful capitalism with my two brand new Fletcher boys. It wouldn't be a pain domination 100 days without Fletcher and capitalism. I used some of the emeralds I made to buy a new iron axe which I then used to clear out a metric ton of trees that somehow appeared in my base. You deforestation montage. off nature, I noticed my farm was once again destroyed. Hmm, I wonder by who. I crafted all of the wood into sticks again and it was back to some more beautiful capitalism. And now I am the proud owner of 43 juicy emeralds. On day 12, I was tired of these damn slimes invading my territory. I made a bunch of shovels and I turned the entire grass area in my base into path blocks so no more boyos would spawn. It's not pretty, but neither are you, so get over it. Okay, okay, that was rude. I'm sorry. I was just kidding. It was a joke. After this, I went over to my farm and I harvested all of the carrots and wheat that were ready, or at least I tried to, because I was being bullied the entire time. I guess this is what I get for saying you guys aren't pretty. I'm sorry. After this, I used the wheat that I harvested to super breed my cows and sheep and just look at all these boys. And yes, they're all boys. Don't ask me how it works because I do not know. On day 13, I cleared out my inventory and I got on top of Tim Burton. Wow, does that sound interesting. Anyways, today was the day that I would begin my journey out into the wild for some more dank loot. I began my trip by dispatching the first iron golem that I saw for some sweet free iron. From here on out, every single village that I go to will be plunged into darkness because I have to steal their torches. I could make charcoal and make torches myself, but this is way more fun because I'm teaching these villagers the valuable lesson of not messing with me. I was out here stealing and killing until day 14 because I kept running into the same villages and I wasn't really finding anything else that I needed. Upon getting home, I harvested a bunch of the trees that had grown around on my base and once it became nighttime I brought my horse into my house and totally didn't strip one of the walls when I went to bed. On day 15 I woke up with big boy plans on my mind. I made some shears, headed to the sheep pen, and I began stealing their wool so I could make beds to begin breeding villagers with. I crafted 13 more beds for a grand total of 14. I was now a man that was rich with beds. I began tearing down the spare house to make room for a villager breeder except my iron axe broke so I had to buy another for my blacksmith friend here before I finished the job. I spent the rest of the night and half of day 16 working on the villager breeder. I didn't want to do the same one I did for my ocean only world so I just did a basic design with farmland in the center and beds all around so they would just keep breeding. This isn't the prettiest farm but you know what I don't really care. This is about survival. So I scanned the two villagers into their new forever home with the promise of job blocks and I made it rain carrots on these boys. While waiting for these guys to start making babies, bet you didn't expect to hear that sentence today, I harvested all of my wheat and I fed them moo moos and sheep so they could all also make babies. Everyone is making babies today. <laughs> Why did I say that? On day 17, it was back to some good old fashioned deforestation because I was in desperate need of sticks for emeralds. After killing some once glorious nature, I went back to check on my villagers and they became a family already. After this, I realized just how impatient of a person that I really am. So instead of waiting for the villager to grow up, I began leveling my weaponsmith for some diamond tools. And his trades absolutely sucked. Or iron for an emerald or a ton for a bell. Yay. But hey, I now have 12 backup iron axes 
axes to continue deleting trees with. This was going to be a long hundred days. End off the day, I crafted all of my wood into sticky boys and I did some dank capitalism and I banked a sweet 45 emeralds. On day 18, I did what I had to do and I wasted the only bits of iron that I had to trade with the weaponsmith and I was still unable to fully level him up. So I went back to chopping hella trees and while out, I saw a beehive that spawned and it was full of honey. I grabbed my one and only glass bottle that I dropped from the witch that I killed and I grabbed some honey. And apparently bees don't like it when you steal from them. I really don't understand why though. Villagers seem to love it. Anyways, after running far enough away, they forgive me for my crimes against Bee Skyrim. Good thing they have the attention span of what was I saying again? On day 19, I crafted myself a shield, emptied my inventory, and I got on my horse because I was ready to go on a journey. A grand quest to rob some iron golems of their iron so I could partake in some more exquisite capitalism. The first village that I found had a juicy iron golem, and I quickly downed him, and he dropped me three crisp iron. This village also had a blacksmith that had almost a full set of iron armor and three spare ingots in the chest. I actually think that's enough to finish the trade, but no, I was not finished. I went to the next village and I slayed their iron golem. I also found a bunch of free food and emeralds laying in chests that definitely didn't belong to anyone. However, it was becoming nighttime, so I brought my horse into this man's home, pushed him out of his bed, and I went to sleep for the night. On day 20, it was back out to looting, stealing, and killing. I found another blacksmith and I decided to buy this guy's sharpness 2 unbreaking 3 sword because I wanted a nicer weapon. And the blacksmith chest conveniently had two more swords! Well, it looks like I just wasted 21 emeralds. However, I guess the enchantments do kind of make it better, but yikes. Anyways, I was out looting and pillaging until day 24 when I decided to head back home because my inventory was beyond full. Overall, this was a crazy successful loot run. I mean, just look at my inventory. I got two diamonds, a ton of food, iron gear, and a stack of iron. On day 25, I took my stack of iron to the weaponsmith for some more juicy capitalism. I wasted way more iron than I wanted to, but it's all good because he had an efficiency 2 diamond axe trade. It's almost like he knows how I'm gonna get so many emeralds. After this, I filled my inventory with sticks and I traded for 49 fresh, juicy emeralds. I then wasted those very emeralds on enough diamond axes to destroy the Amazon rainforest. And this guy's final trade was a pretty garbo diamond sword, but you know what? It's all good. All I needed was axe access to diamond tools. Getting enchantments and XP is GG easy. On day 26, I woke up to the beautiful sight of not just one iron golem at my base, but two. I pushed one into my base, and these two guys are like my own two personal perimeter bodyguards. Just look at these dudes go. After this, I spent the rest of the day harvesting more wood, and I crafted it all into a ton of sticks, which I then traded to my Fletchers for 44 juicy new emeralds. On day 27, I began the day with some more beautiful capitalism. I traded enough sticks to finish leveling my first Fletcher, and I got a trade that converts arrows to regen 2 arrows. After this, I ended up with a stack and 38 more emeralds. These days were going pretty well. On day 28, I placed a boat outside of the villager farm, and I teased them with the possibility of freedom, only to then trap them in the very boat that they had attempted to walk over. I broke open the other empty house, and I placed a block to lure in the villager. Only thing is, this wasn't just any ordinary villager. Apparently, Apparently, I was trying to trap Harry Houdini because this man was trying to parkour my fence to escape. I finally got him to become an armor boy and I captured him with some fence and leveling him up was crazy expensive. I spent all of my emeralds for half an inventory of pants. I also had to waste more iron to keep leveling him up and he ended up getting diamond leggings and boots. I bought the diamond legs that had prot 3 and I put them on to increase my drip factor. You should totally leave a comment about the insane caliber of drip that you are experiencing right now. On days 29 through 30, it was bad to deforestation. Every stack of wood logs is the equivalent to 16 emeralds. After harvesting more than six stacks of wood, I crafted all of it into sticks and I ended up with a double chest full of the boys. I went back to my Fletchers and I began the glorious process that is capitalism. These guys took forever to keep refreshing their stock, but in the end, I banked a solid stack of emeralds. Later in the day, the villagers were being difficult and stopped refreshing their trades. So while waiting, I went back on my farmer arc. I harvested all of the wheat and replanted it, and then I bred my metric ton of moomoos. On day 31, I finished trading all of my sticks and I ended up with almost two stacks of emeralds.
diamonds. After this, I bought a pair of diamond boots from my armorer, and I finished leveling him up. His last item was a pretty garbage diamond helmet, but diamonds are diamonds, so I also bought the helmet, and I now almost have full diamond. At this point, I was wandering around my base, wondering what I should do next. While thinking, I went back to check on my armorer, and apparently I missed his final trade. This man had full diamond armor for his trades. I thought these guys only got like three pieces of armor each. Anyways, I've now already got full diamond armor, and it's only been 31 days. After this, I scammed another villager out of the pen, and I trapped him in the hopes of being an aspiring librarian. I reset his trades one time, and this man had already gotten mending. I was honestly pretty hyped at this point. I ran back to my house to get books for the trade, and I bought my first mending book to lock in his trade. On day 32, I totally improved the property value of these houses, and I definitely did not ruin them. I turned the area into a stable, like housing area for more librarian villagers, because it wouldn't be a pain domination 100 days without librarians. Anyways, I placed a boat trap and broke some fence, and I waited for the plan to come together. Except the baby villager also escaped during this, and I really, really wanted to kill him. But alas, I couldn't. Not because I cared about him, but because if I did, my trades would be ruined and the iron golems would probably kill me. I placed beds and lecterns for the villagers, except for some reason, he preferred his old home that I abruptly stole from him. Rude. On day 33, I boated my man over to his house, and I bamboozled him into his forever new home. And after only two rerolls, he got looting three, which I really couldn't resist because of the dank XP that slimes have to offer. After that, I lured out another man, trapped him, and began rerolling him, which took most of the day. That is, until I got prot four for a disgusting 53 emeralds, which is actually a lot. So I quickly slept through the night, and I began harvesting more wood the next day so I could afford the trade. I crafted the sticks and did some beautiful capitalism, except when I got back to the librarian, the trade was gone. It was too late. So while crying over the milk this villager had spilled, I kept re-rolling his trades until I finally landed on him breaking three, which is something I also needed, so you know what? I'll take it. After this, I moved on to the next villager that I had trapped, and he gave me sharpness four for only 20 emeralds. Nice. Now that I had my sharpness boy, it was on to the next villager. And honestly, ugh, let me tell you about this guy. When I let him out of his boat, he immediately escaped his pen and climbed into the same one as the sharpness dude, so I had to struggle to push him out, and I'm very lucky that the sharpness guy was happy with his confinement, or that could have been way Way, way more complicated than it needed to be. Anyways, I rerolled the last guy until he got Sweeping Edge 2, which is perfect for making a god sword. Except I was now out of emeralds and it was nighttime, but I couldn't even get that much wood that safely. Also, apparently, this group of zombies killed not just one, but two of the nearby iron golems. So I may have gotten eight free iron. Sweet. On day 35, I went out beating up some nature and my biggest fear came true. This creeper tried to be a sneaky boy and explode on me, but not today, good sir. I crafted my wood into sticks and I did some beautiful capitalism with the boys, and my sweeping edge villager didn't lose his trade yet, so god sword, here I come. On day 36, while out ending nature for some more profit, I had an awful realization. I didn't have enough iron to make an anvil. You needed 31 iron, and I only had 23. I definitely need to make an iron farm in the future, but alas... I also needed iron for that. So I came up with this plan to get some easy iron without pissing off the nearby villagers or the iron golems. So I grabbed some lava from the blacksmith and I tried to push an iron golem in it, except he wouldn't fit. I would break the path blocks, but it would be a pain to turn them back into path blocks in the future because I don't have silk touch for grass. So instead I waited for nighttime and I may have pushed this man over to some skeletons until they killed him. But hey, he dropped five ingots. After this, I went out hunting spiders so I could craft some leads to drag some iron golems around easier with. On day 37, I decided to test out my lava idea on the iron golem outside of my base. I dug a pit, placed lava in, and I pushed the guy in so I could watch him burn. And it worked. He dropped me three iron ingots, which is exactly what I needed to get the 31 to make the anvil. So I went back and I crafted the fresh and juicy anvil. And now that I had it, I did some capitalism with the stick boys then bought myself a brand new diamond sword from the blacksmith and I used a grindstone to disenchant it. And thus, the god sword was born. Or so it would have been if I had enough levels. So instead, I went out on a slime massacre for some XP. You montage.
yes, I know what you're going to say. I should have put looting three on my sword first for more XP, but like, listen, I wanted to organize the enchants from the longest to the shortest on the weapon. That way it was absolutely perfect, though there was nothing that could really be done about it. Anyways, it became nighttime and I didn't gain a ton of levels, but I did get my first shot to use the lead strat on some iron golems. And not gonna lie, I feel really bad about this. I held this guy back from the skeleton with the lead just enough that he couldn't attack it and I watched the skeleton shoot him to death. But I mean, hey, I got five free iron and Minecraft is just a game, right? No, Minecraft is life. And speaking of life, while out torturing this iron golem, I almost lost mine. I accidentally punched him while trying to dig into the ground and he did over half of my health while in full diamond armor with two prot two and three enchantments. I quickly fled into the Fletcher's house and let me tell you, I was shaking. I did not want to restart this world again. So anyways, the first thing I did after this close call was test out if directly lava bucketing an iron golem would aggro them. And apparently it doesn't. So I got another free five iron. Nice. I spent most of day 38 out farming slimes and trading for XP when I finally got the 25 levels that I needed to add the last two enchantments that I needed to my sword. And while doing this, I thought of the perfect name for it. I named it God in Anime because that's the power that I have on my side. So don't mess with me. On day 39, I was greeted by my first traveling villager and he had birch saplings. I mean, I really wanted some spruce, but I guess wood is wood. That's what she said. Anyways, I bought three saplings just to be safe because the last time I bought a new sapling from a merchant, <coughs> Ocean World, <coughs> the tree dropped no saplings, so I was at a loss. Anyways, after planting the saplings, I used some bone mill on it and I've already gotten some saplings back. Oh, and don't worry about the trader. I made sure to claim my free leads. After this, I spent the rest of the day chopping wood and smelting it into charcoal to make some torches so I could properly light up my land because I was getting pretty tired of all of these damn mobs in my yard. On day 40, I was having a bad time. I went to make a nether portal and I misplaced obsidian twice. And guess what? I didn't have a diamond pick. You would think I would just level up Poolsmith, right? No, that would take way too long. So I took three of the ultra rare diamonds to make a diamond pick. It's fine, right? I still have enough for an enchantment table, right? So anyways, I fixed the portal and I finished it. And the only way I can light it is with wood catching on fire from lava. So I struggled to set it up and I even burned myself with the lava. If this is how the nether was going, to be, then I was not going to be happy. It was as if the Minecraft gods did not want me to go to the nether because it started raining. So even if I could get the fire to work, it would just go out anyways. So I said, screw it. And I went to sleep. On day 41, I looked up a guide and I still struggled, but the fire finally lit the portal. And so I went through. My initial look around the nether was pretty awful. But what is this I see in the distance? That's right. It was a nether fortress. So later that night to prepare for the trip, I made the classic stone and cobblestone generator. Except I built the whole thing without putting the hoppers first, like an idiot. So anyways, I made the hoppers and added them to the bottom, and now my ugly looking cobble generator that's unfortunately made of cobblestone is now fully operational. On day 42, after getting enough cobblestone, I went back to the nether to spawn proof my portal from ghasts. I also placed a chest with some wood and lava inside just in case I needed to relight the portal. While I'm in the nether, I could also totally get gravel and make my first flint and steel, which I ironically found right away. After this, I made my way over to the nether fortress and this gas would not let me fight my first blaze in peace. So I hit him with the old Uno reverse card. Stupid gas. Not too long after wrecking that gas in Uno, I found a juicy blaze spawner and I sat there farming them for a solid 10 minutes and my looting three was looking real fine. I almost ended up with a stack of blaze rods. So after collecting my blaze rods, I continued searching for the only thing I needed before I could leave this literal hell, nether wart. And I found it surprisingly with no hostile strings attached. Now that I had my nether wart and blaze rods, I needed to leave. I've definitely pushed my luck with the amount of loot that I have. So I ran all the way back to my portal safe room, except I took one quick detour by grabbing some brown mushrooms. Do you know what those are for? If you guessed infecting villagers, then you should give yourself a pat on your gamer back. On day 44, after arriving home from the nether, I made a quick little nether wart farm. So now I have everything that I needed from the nether and I really don't have to ever go back. I mean, it's not like there's an end to be in super flat world anyways. Well, thinking about what I would do to infect my Fletchers, I got the golden opportunity. I was getting wool to make carpet to stop iron golem spawns and a zombie picked up the wool so he wouldn't despawn. So I literally just let him inside and I locked him in the house with the boys. Nothing compares to cracking open a cold one with the boys. Unless the boys are the ones getting cracked open, I guess. Anyways, I lost a lot 
of sheep by doing this. Let's just call this the Great Sheep Exodus. After trying to save whatever sheep I could, I got some boats and I struggled to separate these villagers into the two different boats. And while I was struggling, the stupid zombie stole the boat. Joke's on him, he doesn't know about the exploitation that he's soon to endure. Later that night, I crafted the enchantment table so I could try to get Silk Touch for the gold in the nether that I needed to make golden apples. That is a mouthful. Anyways, I uh... Forgot that lapis isn't exactly a thing in super flat, though so, uh, I made that enchantment table and wasted my last two diamonds for absolutely nothing. On day 45, I begin the day by freeing another villager from Villager Con 2021. I cleared out the area in between my house and the now zombie Fletcher's house to make room for some more villagers. I needed this man to give me silk touch. While working on the area, I heard the soundy sound that sounds like a wandering simp. So I grabbed my emeralds and I ran outside like a child to an ice cream truck. And this guy was selling sand. I really, really needed sand. However, I'm not going to smelt it because I can just get glass from villagers. This is future pain talking. No, I can't. I don't know why I thought that. Plus, I also bought two puffer fish because, I mean, there's not exactly any fish here and I now have some free buckets. Anyways, now the trades were done, I dispatched our friends here. Can I get some 07s in the chat? After deleting our new friend, I tried to lure the villager into his new prison and apparently he preferred death because he ran into the house full of zombies and got into the other boat. Well, I mean, thanks for the free second zombie, chump. After this, I struggled to get another villager into the prison and I began re-rolling him, except I realized I was out of emeralds and both of my stick boys were zombies, so I kinda just had to go to sleep. On day 46, I realized that I could use my farmer and the villager breeder to trade carrots for hella emeralds. So I traded with the guy and got a decent 16 emeralds, which should hopefully be enough since silk touch enchants are typically pretty cheap. After this, I spent literally the entire entire day re-rolling the new librarian and this man would not give me silk touch until finally i had gotten it so i bought one and i added it to my trash pickaxe and then i went back to the nether for some juicy gold i spent the whole night in the nether and i came home with a stack in 37 gold on day 47 i finally had a use for the furnaces that i borrowed so i began smelting my gold these gapples were going to be freshly baked and glorious after finishing smelting the gold i made 12 golden apples and now the only thing that i needed to cure zombie villagers was glass and unfortunately i kind of needed to save the sand so instead i trapped another villager ate him into a cleric and i began training with him and hey i now have lapis now that i don't need it i guess while waiting for the villagers trades to refresh i made six fermented spider eyes and then i went to sleep for the night on day 48 i had a big brain idea so i grabbed another villager and tried to make him into a fletcher he was reluctant at first but after thinking it over he accepted the job offer i spent the next day and a half just smacking away at trees showing nature who's the boss. On day 50, I took my inventory of sticks and wood and I traded it with this Fletcher and I leveled up my cleric. And then it had hit me. You trade the glass bottles for emeralds. You don't get the glass bottles for the emeralds. You trade them for emeralds. So I literally just wasted all of that time. I was so disappointed that I F5 to look at the camera and then I noticed that I'm also a Steve now for some reason. What the hell was going on with this day? Anyways, I reloaded my game and it was fixed. I wonder how many of these days I spent just steving around. Anyways, now that I learned that I couldn't get glass using villagers, I had to sacrifice my stack of sand that I had gotten from the wandering simp. So I guess I'm really lucky that I bought the sand in the first place. After the sand had smelted, I made my bottles, filled them with water, and began brewing my potions of weakness. And for the first time in the super flat world, I cured the zombie villagers. I spent days 51 through 52 continuing to cure the boys, and I found a chicken. This really is just like the ocean world. I grabbed some seeds and I lured them into a boat, and I freaked the hell out. I had gotten a chicken. I mean, I didn't really need much from him. I guess I could use the feathers for the Fletchers, but yeah, chicken. Later that night, I finished curing my two Fletchers and let's just say hello to the beautiful capitalism that will soon be incoming. I began day 53 with some beautiful maximum discount trading and I ended up with a stack of emeralds right away. The first thing I did with my new wealth was buy another pair of boots and leggings so I could upgrade the enchantments that I had on them. And I now had Rot 4, Rot 3, and Feather Falling 4. Things were really looking up, especially with Feather Falling, because there are tons of mountains that I could fall off in this super flat world. So I'm very glad I had it. On day 54, I began preparing my hardcore super flat endgame. There's no end dragon to beat, so instead I want to make a deluxe super base made out of wood. I wish I also had 
had spruce and dark oak, but sadly, all I have is oak wood and birch wood. What year is this? Anyways, I did have a theme and a plan because I would like to make a more nature base that is kind of suspended from the ground with pillars. So I spent the whole day gathering tons of leaves and wood for my new super base idea. I also enchanted a new diamond god axe and I gave it the perfect name, Oak Obliterator. That's right, you better watch out oak trees. After birthing my new axe into the world, I saw something interesting in the distance. It was another chicken zombie rider. So I led it into my base and I asked the baby zombie a question. Get it? It's not a bad joke. It's a good joke, right? That's a good joke. It's funny. Laugh. Ha ah. Anyways, I grabbed some seeds, led the chicken to the boat, and I celebrated. Operation Chicken Chamber is a go. On day 55, I grabbed a new villager and made him into what I think is the first shepherd villager I've ever made in Minecraft. I slowly maxed out his trades, and I came to the sad conclusion. Each shepherd gets one color of wool and doesn't trade you any dyes. I just wanted black dye, man. But I mean, hey, I now have infinite black beds, I guess. After this, I decided to do some research to see if I could get squids to spawn in water, and no surprise, I found nothing online. Although supposedly the ocean level was set to Y0 in these worlds, which is under bedrock. But I tried anyways, because why not? So I turned this little farm area into a pool. I mean, it might work, right? On day 56, I started shearing all of my sheep to collect the ugly white wool, but then I had yet another massive brain idea, and I crafted purple dye and started making all of my sheepos purple. I have zero recollection of what I did for the rest of this day, because all I wrote in my notes was that I made the sheeps purple. Good job, Payne. On days 57 through 58, I began setting up the layout of my villager trading hall. The only problem was, you know, everything that was in my way. So I started off by taking Oak Obliterator out for a spin, and I cleared all of the trees anywhere near being in the way. Take that nature. After clearing the land, I started another great sheep exodus. Just look at the domination nation go. Except two of them were making my life significantly more difficult, so they just kind of disappeared. Kind of like Avatar Aang in the beginning of the original Avatar series. Except they weren't frozen. They were dead. Definitely dead. On day 59, I bought a bunch of enchanted books from the boys and added them to my diamond pick, making it a god pick that I rightfully named Hick Astley. You're welcome for that, by the way. I spent the next four days breaking down buildings to make room for the trading hall and finishing the layout of where all of my villager homes were going to be. After breaking down the buildings, I laid out all of the villager chambers that would make up the walls of the building. I left a five block space between the center and the chambers and it looked kind of okay. At least I thought it did. I mean, listen, all I had to work with was oak wood plus the only glass that I could get. I had to silk touch steel from villages and don't worry, I'm saving that for my beautiful house in the future. Anyways, this is what the trading hall was looking like so far and it kind Kinda gave me the vibe of, like, a prison from Pirates of the Caribbean. I love it. I spent days 64 through 67 moving every villager I had into the new, totally not prison, and it doesn't have a roof yet, but it's looking pretty cool actually. I would love to do a time lapse for it, but sometimes when I'm building, I just pause the game a lot and take breaks, or I'm just all over the place, so this one probably wouldn't look that great. Later that night, I decided that it was finally time to cull my cow herd. There were so many, and they weren't living their best lives. Let me tell you, I know it's a video game, but this did not feel right, like, at all. But I needed more food and I was not going to move all these cows when I relocated their pen. Anyways, I ended up with more than seven stacks of beef. On day 68, I began the day by banishing my spare Fletcher that had bad trades to the Shadow Realm. I mean, not like I could kill him and ruin my trades, right? After this, I squished the cows into the smaller pen and I began working on the front porch area for the villagers. And I mean, it was looking really nice, or at least as nice as it would with only oak wood. At this point, I was desperate for spruce and I remembered that you could dye woods, except I would also need black dye to make brown dye. So yeah, I guess no nice would for me. On day 69, nice. In celebration of the funny number, I added an AFK chamber to my stone farm, and I spent the whole day with a hair tie on my mouse that I totally didn't steal from my fiance. And after all of that mining, I ended up with a ton of stone. I mean, just look at all these stacks. Oh, and while I was here, a wandering trader showed up, and this man had sand and sugarcane. So I bought as much of both as I could, plus I also bought the podzel. I mean, I can't do much with it, but it's super nice, and I really wish I could spread it. Today really was day 69, because today was nice. I spent days 70 through 72 working on the roof for the villager trading hall, and hear me out here, it's a work in progress. I began by laying out the stone accents in the highest point of the roof, and then I slaved away connecting the individual parts 
parts together. This experience was awful. I have never made a roof like this in my life. And between it being all gross oak wood and the amount of struggling that I was doing, I was not very confident that it was going to look good. But hey, while on the roof, I saw a trader in the distance. And this man had both cactus and jungle saplings, which are kind of perfect for some of the large foliage that... I had planned for the build. And honestly, I walked away from the game so many times because of this build. But overall, it kinda does look pretty cool. I also made some lanterns from the iron that I had to properly light the inside of the ceiling. And it actually kinda gives off the vibe that I was looking for. If only I had spruce wood. Oh, and speaking of spruce wood, I actually had another wandering trader that had some okay stuff that I definitely didn't forget to record. Anyways, I got some ugly acacia saplings and the brown dye that I needed to make some wood darker. I mean, I still don't have a renewable source of the dye though, so it doesn't really make much of a difference. On day 83, it was time to continue the big plans that I had. So I started the day by lighting up the area behind my temporary house, and I paid a visit to the villager zombie that I caught with the boat a couple of days ago. I also named him Richard. Don't know why, but that's his name now. I began clearing out the trees in this area because this was going to be the new home for my cow and sheep farms. I cleared out all of the crops from my farm, and I began moving all of the stuff out of the chest in my house and over to the new temporary dumping ground. There is zero chance that I'm going to end these 100 days without some juicy organization, because this is driving me nuts. Anyways, after all my stuff was even more disorganized than the new storage area, I went to sleep for the night because I need there to be zero mobs around for this project. On day 84, I went out to mark the new perimeter of my land expansion, and of course, the creeper crew showed up to flex on me. I mean, to be fair, I would flex on people too if I could explode. Anyways, one of these jerks blew up the corner of my fence. So I fixed it, cleared out the rest of the area, and I began tearing down my house. There were a lot of memories here. Remember when I used to have my horse in here for like the first 30 days? You know, I also kind of forgot the horse's name. It was some celebrity or something. I don't remember it, so his name is Tony Danza now, because that just seems right. Later that night, while planning out my animal pens, I planted an acacia and a giant jungle tree because I wanted to see if any of their wood would work for the design that I had in mind. And honestly, neither of the woods looked that good, but I didn't really have much of a choice without dark oak or spruce. So, being in worlds like this really makes you respect the woods that you like to build with. I'm just saying. On day 85, I began my new farm by laying out the entrance and perimeter of the building. The idea that I had would have the cows and sheep inside of the building, and I would have the horse stables on the right side of the entrance, for some easy access. By the end of the next day, I had finished up the horse barn, and it was looking pretty good considering the lack of superior spruce wood. To add the finishing touches to it, I made some more lanterns to light it up, and keep that barnyard aesthetic that I was going for. On day 87, I finished the perimeter for the barn and I began adding details. I split up areas inside of the barn with fencing and I turned the floors that didn't need to be grass into paths so no more sticky boys could spawn. After this, I grabbed some wheat and led the moomoos into their brand new homes. On day 88, I gathered the supplies I would need to begin trading with the Mending Librarian so I could level him up. After maxing him out, I bought three name tags so I could name the three chickens that have been sitting in boats for literal ages now. I named the name tags McChicken, McChicken Deluxe, and Chicken Selects. Yeah, I was kind of hungry while naming them. I started out by boating over the first chicken, and I named my man's McChicken. After that, I broke the boat with the other two chickens, and I led them over with seeds while dodging the sussy slime. After putting them in the pen, I named them both, and now my barn is sponsored by McDonald's. Hashtag not an ad. McDonald's food is garbage. I started day 89 by waking up to a wandering traveler who had jungle saplings again. Why do I only get the ugliest saplings? I took out all of my rage on the simp for the ugly woods that he was offering me, and I also killed his two furry followers. I spent most of this day struggling to get all of my sheep into their new pens. I kept losing boys here and there, and these damn slimes would would not leave me alone. I really, really need to respawn proof my area. These slimes are going to be the death of me, literally. After getting most of the sheep into the pen, I said screw it and I control alt deleted the stragglers. On days 90 through 91, now that all the animals were inside the barn, I finished the front part of the roof and for using only oak wood, I was pretty impressed with how it turned out. I spent the rest of these days finishing the perimeter and the roof, which were way, way easier than the villager house. That roof was the most ridiculous one I have ever built. Anyways, this new place was looking gorgeous. I even matched the aesthetic on the inside. As day 92, 
rolled by, the thoughts of me not having an actual house were very strong in my mind. So what did I do? I began making a nature area in between the village trading hall and the barn. Plus this way, no gross slimes could spawn nearby and annoy the crap out of me. This place was going to be like Disney World. Beautiful on the inside with all the ugly hidden outside parts in the walls. Later that night, I finally tore down the last village house that was plaguing my base. This house had been sitting here since the first day I moved in. So by tearing this down, I am destroying history. But you know what? That's okay because it's ugly. While I was tearing this down, it started thunderstorming and the lightning strikes were hitting way too close for comfort. So instead of having all of my hard work burned to the ground, I went to sleep for the night. On days 93 through 95, I began the day by tearing down my stone generator because it was unfortunately also in my way. Also, somehow these damn slimes are still spawning in my grass area. I am beyond done listening to these man's slapping noises. After tearing down the stone generator, I began building the natural staircase idea I had in mind that would lead up to my house, and this took so, so, so much wood. Throughout these 100 days, I might have done enough damage to even out the entirety of Team Trees. Also, for legal reasons, that is a joke. Don't kill nature. Nature is friend. Anyways, after almost finishing the path up, I ran out of wood again, so trees, I'm sorry, but it's all ogre now. While building the porch for my new house, which also used a metric ton of wood. Go figure, right? On day 96, I got some crazy good inspiration for how my house would be. I also didn't need as much space as I usually use because most Minecraft items were actually missing from this world. So after building a small outside area, I began laying out the downstairs room that I would probably put my bed and furnaces in. I also started smelting some of the sand so I could finally have windows. The further I got into building this house, the more I missed spruce and dark oak wood. This house is kind of giving me like super old Minecraft vibes, like version 1.2 or something. Anyways, I moved on to the next layer and I laid out the perimeter for the top room and I added this barn-like roof to the top. After finishing the roof, I added all of the lighting I would need and hear me out here, it's empty inside, but hey, oh my. Just kidding, I actually was really running out of time because this house took all the way until day 98 to finish. On day 99, I crafted some item frames and did some super basic broad organization. This world doesn't have like 70% of the blocks and items, so I really didn't need a ton of chests. Well, the organization honestly hurts me inside. There's not enough chests and towards the end, I just started cramming stuff into miscellaneous chests because I was running out of time and organizing these chests took the entire 99th day. On day 100, there were a couple of things I wanted to finish up before showing off this pretty cool base. I turned all my bones into bone meal and I went around planting jungle and oak trees to really make this place feel like it was submerged in a totally not gross slime infested super flat world. I used the bone meal for grass to fill both empty space and stop slimes from spawning and I might have accidentally created a mob farm under my house. Anyways, now that my surroundings area had been beautifully naturefied. Yes, that totally is a word. I have successfully survived, no, arrived in 100 days of hardcore super flat Minecraft. I really hope you all enjoyed this video and since it was so different from regular Minecraft I decided to focus more on building and not so much on getting crazy auto farms working and having everything kind of be like stacked and honestly I think this turned out pretty poggers. So anyways here is a crazy montage to show off everything that we accomplished in 100 days. really enjoyed this video as it was both very fun and kind of awful to record. The slimes were menacing and I couldn't get a break for even a second during this entire 100 days. But I'm still very proud of what I accomplished and the cool builds that came out of it. Real quick, I want to give a huge shout out to my channel members. You're all super awesome and you really go the extra mile to help me continue my dream job. Thank you guys so much. Anyways, this has been Pain Domination and I hope you all have an amazing day. Peace.